in this 3D tutorial, I will introduce you to working with armor paint. This was a request from Europe. Armor Paint is a standalone software specifically designed for physically based texture painting. Armor Paint will cost around $20 US, and while there is a free version on GitHub, it is not the stable release, and you'll need to know how to compile the code. Armor Paint runs on the GPU, making it dependent on the graphics card. Updates are free for those who purchase Armor Paint. I've provided a link to Armor Paint in the description. The OBJ file is the best supported in Armor Paint, but you can also use FBX, Blend, and GLTF files. I'm using the low poly version door from a previous tutorial for this tutorial. The link is in the description. I opened the FBX file in Blender and saved it as an OBJ. Otherwise, the model would be broken and unusable. I can simply drag and drop the model right into Armor Paint and choose Import. You can use the middle mouse button to pan. The right mouse button allows you to orbit around the model. Scrolling the middle mouse button zooms in and out. And shift the middle mouse button will move the lighting. You can always import your own environment map under the viewport menu. Under preferences, I would recommend activating the show assets names for ease of use. I would also recommend saving often since Armor Paint is still in active development. It is stable, but just to be sure, save often. I'll be using textures that I downloaded from CCO Textures. The links are in the description. I can drag and drop the textures into the textures window. I double click on the default material to open up a node window. I rename the material to concrete. Materials in Armor Paint work similarly to those in Blender. I delete the RGB node by selecting it and hitting delete on the keyboard. Then I drag each texture map onto the node window and connect them to their proper inputs on the material output node. To see the material on the model, simply drag and drop the concrete material onto the model. Obviously this isn't what I want since the concrete material is covering the entire model. In order to apply the concrete only to the steps and the door frame, I can change the selection from shared to door frame. Under the vector menu, I add a mapping node. And this is so I can change the scale of the concrete material. Connect the mapping node vector to each of the texture nodes. I add a UV map 
from the input menu and connect it to the mapping node. I can now scale the material. Now note that the material looks a little stretched, but this is due to the UV unwrap and not the actual material. Since I want to make the concrete a bit darker, I add a mix RGB node from the color menu. I also add an RGB node from the input menu. And I change the color. I connect the RGB node to the top color of the mix RGB node. And I connect the color texture to the bottom color of the mix RGB node. And then I connect the mix RGB node to the base color of the material output. I can then right click on the concrete layer and duplicate it. And then change from door frame to steps. Now I make a new material, and I call it metal, and then I drag each of the texture maps onto the node window and connect them to their proper inputs on the material output node. To see the material on the model, I drag and drop the material onto the model. And I change the selection from shared to hinge. Now the metal is a bit too shiny for me. So I add a separate RGB node from the converter menu. Then connect the roughness texture to the separate RGB node. I then add a color ramp from the converter menu. And I connect the red channel of the separate RGB to the color ramp. I then connect the color ramp to the roughness of the material output. To add a second color stop to the color ramp, I click on the plus button, and then I can change the color. I can now change the position so both colors affect the roughness. Under the vector menu, I will add a mapping node. And this is so I can change the scale of the metal material. I connect the mapping node vector to each of the texture nodes. Then I add a UV map from the input menu, I connect it to the mapping node, and now I can scale the material. I can then right click on the metal layer and duplicate it, and then change it from hinge to knob. 
and I duplicate it one more time and change from knob to ring. I make a new material and name it wood. Then I drag each texture map onto the node window and connect it to their proper inputs on the material output node. And to see the material in the model, I drag and drop the wood material onto the model. And I change from shared to door. Under the vector menu, I add a mapping node. And this is so I can change the scale and rotation of the wood material. I connect the mapping vector to each of the texture nodes. Then I add a UV map node from the input menu. Connect it to the mapping node. Now I can scale and rotate the material. I'll now bake a couple of maps for the material. I add a new layer to the top of the layer stack and name it AO. I open the Bake tab, make sure that AO is selected, then all I need to do is click on the model, and I can now see the AO map. To use this map properly, I need to change the Blend Mode to Multiply. Now right now the AO map is being applied to all of the channels. To correct this, I right click on the map and deselect all of the channels except for base color. I add a new layer and call it curvature. I select curvature from the menu and click on the model. I change the blend mode to hue. I right click on the map and deselect all of the channels except for base color. If you want to save these particular materials, you can right click on a material and then export it as a .arm file to be reused in other armor paint projects. To export the textures, go to File, Export Textures. You do have some limited presets such as Unity and Unreal that are available to you. Since I have multiple parts to my mesh, and I want the textures to export separately for each. I need to make sure that I have a different atlas assigned to each part of the model. Make sure that you note which atlas belongs to which part of the mesh. You can always rename the textures. Then you can choose your export settings and click on export. You can also export the AO and the curvature maps by right clicking on the maps and choosing export. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this useful. Please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe and turn on the notifications. Have a good day.